Hello and welcome to the Yes to Fitness podcast. So today's episode, we have Dan Maskell, who is um, an online coach who also has the same coach as me. So he's coached by Jace. Um, and we're just going to go through a few questions just about bodybuilding. Dan's recently post show, um, competed two, two shows three, four weeks ago now. Um, maybe a little bit. Um, it was about seven or eight weeks ago. Yeah, blimey. There you go. Yeah, it was longer than that. The, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 17th and 18th of April. There you go. So Dan prepped through lockdown, um, big achievement, and absolutely smashed his shows as well. So yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about the shows, how it all went, how prepping was in lockdown, and then obviously Dan is a coach as well. So we're just going to talk about a bit about coaching, how he got into it, um, and, and and just touch on a few subjects there. So yeah, Dan, quickly introduce yourself. How did you get into bodybuilding? Who you are, etc. Um, and then we'll get cracking. Right, well, I'm Dan Maskell. Um, I'm an online coach, DM online coaching specialist. And yeah, um, how did I get into bodybuilding? Yeah, go on. So yeah. essentially, so I've made a few notes with this, but yeah. So <laughs> how I got into bodybuilding, essentially, I, I never had a goal of bodybuilding. Like bodybuilding and competing, to me, were just not something I ever wanted to do. Um, growing up, I was always small. Um, I was never very big. Um, I was sort of skinny and then had that sort of skinny fat stage um, where eating the wrong foods, having subways on the way to uh, like home from school and Mackie D's <laughs> breakfast on the way to school every day. So, um, yeah, I, I went through that skinny fat stage and looking around, all the other kids my age had abs and stuff like that. And I just I wanted to be better than I was. I wasn't comfortable in my own skin and um, I wasn't happy with the way I looked. Um, then when I was uh, yeah, about 15, my brother got a weight bench which he never used, but I used it religiously every day. And I didn't know a thing about training. All I knew was how to bench press. So I bench press literally every day for about a year until I then transitioned into a gym environment and started training at Beckham. And, and growing up, I did loads of sport as well. I played rugby. So I wanted to be bigger for rugby because I was fed up getting battered on the pitch. So I got into training and I knew sod all. Like I took all the advice from everyone in the gym. Like you see all the big people and you look at what they're doing. And it helped a little bit. Don't get me wrong. I had them newbie gains, as you would say. So I put on a bit of mass, but I never really got to where I wanted to get to. And I put it down to my genetics. I was like, I've got shit genetics, as everyone does. And I'd look around and see everyone else and be like, I wish I had genetics like them. Why can't I look like this? And why can't I look like that? And someone I always looked up to in bodybuilding, like in training in general, was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, I just loved his physique and I loved his attitude, his mindset, like break the rules, like all of his, like he's got 10 different rules and stuff like that. And I just, I loved watching all the stuff he did. So I followed his training plan, training two, twice a day, like seven days a week. He didn't rest. Like this is what the <laughs> training plan was. Like roughly what his diet was. And all I got was injuries. I kept injuring myself. <laughs> uh, when you're young and you're injured, like, you know nothing about, like, you don't know anything about rest and recovery. And when you're injured, you think, oh, just I'll push through it. I'll power through it. Yeah. Which just makes it worse. Yeah. So I spent years and years in the gym with minimal rewards. So I was gaining very little. And it wasn't until I actually decided why am I not getting to where I need to get to that I decided, you know what, I need to do more research into this. So I did a PT qualification, studied and become a personal trainer, um, then did a bit more studying on other things, um, nutrition based side of things. And I looked at a lot of the people out there that were achieving great results on YouTube and things like that and listening to what they had to say. And then you come to the realization that, you know what? Half the things that people were telling me in the gym were a load of shit. Like, <laughs> and they were. Like, <laughs> nobody ever tell, tells you in the gym. Nobody ever says, oh, mate, you need to take a rest day or how no. many days a week do you rest? Like, that's never the thing. It's like, how much your bench? How much your deadlift? And all of that is irrelevant if you want to build muscle and you want to grow. So after I actually found out that rest and recovery was one of the staples of trading, training intensity and nutrition side of things were the three like main things that you need to achieve anything within like bodybuilding and training. 
it wasn't until then that I started to progress when I implemented them all into my training. But essentially, I've, I've, I've been off topic because you said, but yeah, essentially nice. with the whole bodybuilding, why I got into it was I was, I, I would prep for, so I'd prep for holidays and stuff like that and I'd get lean. And one year I got down to about 4% body fat myself. Nice. And it was literally just me and the knowledge that I had learned and putting that into action. And I did a lot of cardio, don't get me wrong, um, but I got to a physique where I was happy with for my holiday. And a lot of people were asking me, like, oh, are you competing? And I was like, no, I'm going on holiday, mate. Like, <laughs> well, well, I don't give a shit about competing, really. Because um, I didn't care. It wasn't ever anything that had appealed to me. Um, I'd been to a couple of bodybuilding shows because I had a few mates that competed. But for me, it's, it's not something I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people around me kept saying, Dan, you should compete. And I was like, nah, nah, it's not a bit of me. And they're like, no, no, I really think you should. You've got potential. Like, look what you've done. Like, and you did that on your own. And I was like, so because all these people were saying it to me and I was getting a bit fed up with explaining to them that I didn't want to, <laughs> I just said, yeah. So it was the same conversation over and over. Like, I'd be like, talk to this person. No, I don't want to compete because of X, Y, and Z. Have the same conversation. No, because of X, <laughs> Y, and Z. So in the end, I was like, okay, I'll compete next year. So every time when someone was like, oh, are you competing? I'd be like, oh, no, I'm competing next year. And I'm like, okay, nice. And conversation over. <laughs> Sorted, I was happy with that. <laughs> but me being the way I am, if I say I'm going to do something, I have to do it. Um, I, I'm very determined. I'm very set in my ways. So if I set out to achieve something, I will work my ass off and basically overcome whatever obstacles are put in my way to achieve yeah. that. So because I said I'd compete next year, that's what I was going to do. I was now, it was now one of my goals next year, we're going to step on stage for the first time. I didn't know how hard it was going to be. I didn't know if I'd enjoy it, but it was a goal. And I like setting goals and achieving them. So for me, that was my drive. It wasn't about the fact that I wanted to compete. It was the fact that it was a goal and I wanted to achieve that goal. Okay. So essentially the next year I decided, right, well, everybody that competes has a coach. So I sort of looked at coaches and stuff like that. And I come across this one fella. And I, I will mention his name because I had actually had this conversation with him in person. So it was John Lofthouse. Okay. And I remember watching his training videos and, and watching him on Instagram. And I've, I've actually written down what I thought. Um, <laughs> so oh, where is it? Pardon? John's quite local. He's Essex. John has coached. Yeah, 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 yeah. John, John's um, up in um, Rayleigh. Rayleigh oh. trains at a stack house gym. Yeah, Rayleigh. Yeah, yeah, house. Yeah, um, yeah. On his pro card last year. Honestly, phenomenal bodybuilder. His physique is amazing. And his flow and his posing are just out of this world. Yeah, I see you've um, done posing coaching. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he does. I've, I've been to a few of his posing coaching um, like classes and stuff like that and very good tips and advice. Um, right, here it is. I found the note. So when I first saw John, I thought he was arrogant. I thought he was stuck up. And honestly, I thought he was a bit of an arsehole. Like, <laughs> and it, and it, it's funny because I didn't even know him. I'd never met him in my life. All I knew was what I had seen of him on social media. Yeah. And I was like, I didn't like him. I, I had this really strong like energy against him and I didn't know what it was. And it annoyed me that I didn't know why I didn't like him. And it took me a bit of time. I had to think like, why don't I like this fella? And it probably took me a good week. And all of a sudden it clicked and I was like, shit, I'm jealous. But yeah. I don't <laughs> like this person because I'm jealous of him. Yeah, yeah. Like he is essentially what I want to be. I want to look like that. I, I, I aspire to be like that. So because he's achieved that and I haven't, I'm jealous. So immediately I dropped him a message and I said, listen, I'm, I'm really interested like in coaching and stuff like that and uh, working with you. And he was, like, he, he was like, come up, have a session with me. So I remember we arranged it. I drove up to Essex, um, I think it was like a day later or two days later. And I trained with him and Sammy and uh, their training partners. And we did a chess session and it was proper like old school bodybuilding style training where there was nothing set out of what they was doing. They'd go in and hit like an incline press, a flat press, a decline press, they'd do some flies. Yeah. There was never really an amount of sets they'd do. They'd like pyramid up and pyramid back down. So like proper like old school bodybuilding style training. 
Um, and you'd train until you were you were fucked, like you were <laughs> done. Do you know I mean, until you couldn't train no more, you were written off. Um, and yeah, honestly, it was such a good session. Actually, it was an upper session because we did chest and back. I remember because for about a week after, I was sore. Like if somebody touched my back, I'd be like, "Ow!" <laughs> and uh, yeah, I decided, you know what? This is the fella for me. And um, in person, I told him, I said, "Listen, this is what I thought of you when I first saw you." It wasn't until I realised that I was jealous and I wanted to be yeah, where yeah. you are that I've actually reached out to you and I think that's a very big thing like in like modern day like society like a lot of people hate against other people and it's because they're jealous they've yeah. achieved stuff that they haven't yet achieved themselves and only from being there myself I realize I I've, because I've experienced it I can understand that but you can you can learn so a lot like from other people if you are jealous you, of someone, they've achieved what you, achieve, you want to achieve. Rather than be jealous, drop them a message. You know that they're, <laughs> they're going to be friendly people. They're going to be quite responsive. Do you know what I mean? Like so, drop a message and actually not friend them, but you know, learn from them. Yeah, hundred percent. And I'm so grateful that I did. Yeah, because yeah. If I didn't, I would still probably be stuck where I where I was then. Yeah, yeah. Hating on people for for no reason. Yeah. And it's, it's a silly mindset to have. So I'm so glad that I overcome that. Um, but yeah, so that was, that was uh, my first bodybuilding coach. Um, and then, so I was with John for, uh, for an off-season. Um, we put on a bit of mass. Well, I say a bit of mass, put on a lot of mass, to be fair. Um, <laughs> I was very happy. I enjoyed the style of training. Um, but then when it got to prepping for my actual comp, um, I decided to change coach. Yeah. And that's when I went with Jace. Um, so I moved over to Jace for my first comp and we got, well, Jace got me pilled. Yeah. Like, I was shredded. Um, and I remember it got to show day. Um, that, don't get me wrong, that prep was hard. Like I learned so much about myself. I experienced emotions that I'd never felt before um, because my body was in a position which it had never been in before. So it was very hard. Um, Caused loads of issues for me family. My parents hated me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was living at home as well. Yeah, so I was like, it's hard. It's hard because you're tired, you're grumpy, you're ratty all the time. And like your family, they're the ones that take it because they're with you 24-7. Yeah. And you don't do it intentionally. It's not like you intentionally do things. But yeah, it just has a, such a knock-on effect on those relationships. Like... Yeah. They was like, you're awful. We hated you. We're like, we wanted to get rid of you. <laughs> so, <laughs> see, I was, I wasn't too bad. I lived on my own for my first prep. Uh, I yeah. had a girlfriend at the time, but like you say, when I got to that stage, she could always just shoot back to where she was, she was from. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, wasn't too bad. I, didn't, I wasn't surrounded by people all the time. Like you say, it is tough. It does, it does sh short on your fuse, doesn't it? But it doesn't. A lot of the time on prep, you you just want to be on your own. Yeah. Like it's really difficult, but you do. You don't want anyone to be around you because it's like it's your journey. You're doing it, and yes, don't get me wrong. It does help when you have like supportive people around you, but at the same time, that can also make it more difficult for you because if they're in your way or say they move something, like you put something somewhere, like your protein shaker, <laughs> and it's not there when you go back to it, you lose your shit. And like you don't do it intentionally, but it's because your fuse is so short. Yeah, yeah. Um. So. Yeah, it is yeah. hard. It is hard. It's very hard. And it's probably even harder for the people you live with. Um, you, don't, you probably don't oh, yeah. expect it has on but, them as well, yeah. No, right, it, it does. It It has such a great... like it, it has a big, large effect on them because I know I've seen it. Yeah, I've yeah. never experienced it because I haven't had somebody else prep in my family. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, yeah you, you, you see the detrimental effect it has on them. So, yeah, it's, it's not nice, but... Um, People, when you finish prep, make sure that you like right your wrongs, you know, apologize to the people that you've upset and uh, spend some good quality time with them. Go get some good quality food with them because <laughs> that's what I've done. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely helped. Love it. So my, my first bodybuilding comp, um, so I went into that with a um, fella called Rahil. So Rahil was prepping at the same time. Um, Rahil was actually with John Loft. Oh, okay. He, yeah, so Rahil was with John when I was with John. And then yeah. when I moved to Jace, I then found out that Rahil had moved to Jace as well. <laughs> um, but saying that, 
me and Rahil still both went back to John for our posing. We still went for posing classes and posing lessons with him. So we didn't like burn our bridges there. We still kept nice and sweet with him because he's he's amazing at what he does. Yeah. Um, so yeah, me and Rahil, I remember like I'd call him up like when I was doing cardio, and I'd be like, "Mate, this is shit." And he's like, "Yeah, I know. I'm not doing cardio. <laughs> what are you doing?" He's like, "I'm doing cardio." And I'd be like, "How long you got?" He's like, 30 minutes." Dude. I'm like, oh, mate, I hate you. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, honestly, those early morning calls. And it was weird because because he was going through the same thing that I was going through. Like, I could relate to him and he could relate to me. Yeah. And we built such a good friendship over this. Um, I, I still talk to him today. Like, we, we still message each other and respond to each other's stories and stuff. So I built a very good, like, bond with Rahil um, through this prep. And what, what was the best bit was we then got to share that experience together on stage. Yeah. So... When it actually come down to show day, my first competition, I competed in the, I think it was um, UK BFF Ultimate Beginners. And I was a junior at the time. So I was 23. Yeah. Was I 23 or was I 22? I was either 22 or 23. Um, so I was, I, was, I was a junior. And they didn't have a class for classic in junior. It was just junior bodybuilding. So because of that, I was allowed to compete in men's classic bodybuilding as well. So I got to do two categories on the day. So I was very happy about that. So I, I remember competing in first thing in the morning and I did um, the, the, the junior bodybuilding. And I remember being backstage and all these people are coming up to you offering you honey pre-workout. Some people were drinking vodka. Like, <laughs> and I remember I knew nothing. I didn't even know that you needed to pump up before going on stage. Like, yeah. I didn't know that. Uh, so I was literally lying backstage with my legs in the air because Jay said, lay down with your legs <laughs> up, just rest. Yeah, yeah. So it, it was literally like five minutes before going on stage, everyone's doing their weights and pumping up and I'm just lying there with my legs in the air and people are like, are you okay? And I'm like, just do your just thing, mate. I'm doing mine, chill. Like, you focus <laughs> on you. Um, and then I remember going on stage and it was weird because it was almost like all this hard work and everything you've done for so long has come down to that one moment. Yeah. And I just, I remember standing on stage and presenting what I had done and being so happy with it. And I was over the moon. And then we got the call outs and I came second okay. for my first ever bodybuilding competition to come second. Yeah, yeah. That is a big achievement. But I wasn't happy with it. I wasn't, it wasn't what I wanted. I didn't go to that competition to come second. Yeah, yeah. I went to that competition to win. So for me, I hadn't done enough. So it was, it was really weird because I remember I walked off stage and when I sat down and my family was like, well done, like you've done really well. And I was just like, huh. Like, like I couldn't see it. I wasn't happy with what I'd achieved. Um, but then later on that day when I stood on stage for the second time and competed against Rahil, I say against him, with him, um, you know. Yeah. Um, I helped him pump up before going on stage. He helped me pump up. Um, we had a laugh and a joke before going on stage. And then when we were on stage, I just remember I was so happy, like more happy than the first time. And I enjoyed the process more. I was posing next to him. I could see him posing. And I was like, I love this. Like, this is amazing. Um, and then I remember we got the call outs and Rahil came second and I came third. And I was more happy with the fact that I had seen him place so well after all the hard work he had done. Yeah. And I was more happy with the third yeah. place trophy because I got to stand on stage with somebody that had done this whole journey with me. Yeah. So for me, yeah. the whole, that was sort of what sparked my love for bodybuilding. More of the, not the fact of standing on stage, but standing on stage with somebody that had put in the work with me that I knew was putting in the work. And also behind before stage, like pumping up with him, having a laugh and a joke with him, that whole side to it, which is like back in the golden era of bodybuilding, where you look how they were joking about, laughing about, yeah. all friendly behind stage. Whereas I'll quickly touch on um, obviously this year, whereas this year when I competed, people weren't that friendly behind stage. They weren't yeah. talking and laughing as much. And as much as I did enjoy the comp and I'm very happy, it wasn't the same. Yeah. Because it didn't have what I see bodybuilding to be, like fun, exciting, enjoyable. Um, the whole camaraderie where you're like 
chatting, laughing, joking. And I, I feel like you've worked so hard to get somewhere. Like you should be so happy. You should be talking to people. You should be like, I was giving everyone compliments. Like I was yeah. well happy. I was like, oh, mate, you look sick. Like your abs, your arms, like. I was well happy, and there was people there just like miserable. <laughs> Two seconds, mate. Well, it's one of those things. Cheers, mate. There you go. Just had a protein delivery. Oi, what protein did you order? Oh, well, I might have to, might have to get the box out. The guy's going to arrive at the door in a minute. So <laughs> well, I might have to have a little <laughs> no protein box open okay. on the podcast. <laughs> I don't no, even mate, know. Off. We're filming a podcast. It was yes. busy. <laughs> Come back later. Come back later. <laughs> nah, it's all yeah. good. It's for the games. I'll let you off. <laughs> It's interesting though, isn't it? Because like you say, that's that's an experience that I remember, mate. And like I think, you know, anyone listening to this that's thinking of competing is again, you know, um it's tough, mate. Like you're on that hour cardio, whatever it may be, you've got no energy in your sessions, six, seven weeks out, whatever it may be. You're not the only one going through that process, you know. There is hundreds of people, hundreds of thousands of people that have been through that process across the world beforehand. And, you know, and there's people going through it exactly the same time as you. So, you know, you're not alone. Yeah, You might be the only one alone in your gym, maybe, who's on the treadmill for an hour at six o'clock in the morning, whatever it may be. But you can always reach out to someone who's entered your show, who's going through that same process, probably feeling their same emotions on the same day at the same time. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it, does make, it's almost, it does make you feel a little bit better. 100%, 100%. And honestly, I would... I would encourage anybody that is prepping or is dieting or is finding it hard, reach out to people that have done it or reach out to people that are currently doing it because they can relate to you yeah. and you can share your experiences and your struggles and they'll have ways that they've overcome things that will really help you. Don't get me wrong, some of it might not help you, but if one of the ways they've done something can help you, then happy days, like, it's going to make your life easier. So don't struggle alone. If you are going through something, reach out. Yeah. You got your delivery now. Hello, mate. Cheers, mate. Look at that. Typical, eh? Delivery. Oh, Dolphin Fitness. You know the one. Uh, back in the day, I used to order off Dolphin Fitness. I haven't, got off there. I haven't ordered off there in a while, but... You know what? Yeah, it used prep. to be the one. Last prep. Yep. My go-to, like, if you're feeling sad, I remember being on the leg press once, like, finished the set, mate, it was like, this is so hard. I was, like, so low on energy. So I just went on Dolphin Fitness, ordered a new protein, and felt better again. <laughs> yeah. honestly, honestly, like, I buy so many different flavoured proteins during prep. Just because <laughs> where you can't have all of this, like, crap, essentially, and all this, like, different tasting foods, Getting like a protein that tastes amazing or just a different flavor satisfies those cravings so much and you feel so much better for it's it. Started already, mate. 14 and a half weeks out, look, and I'm ordering. Like, you see up there, I've got what? There's one, two, three, four. Wait, that is awful. That is awful. Now already. Oh, you're going to have to get a bigger place. <laughs> so I'm, some, I'm literally uh, at a stage now where. What did you order? Way Teller. Way teller. Way teller sounds good. Hey, though. What so flavor that. is that? Way teller, USN, blue label. We've got some applied nutrition. Well, what, what, what's the flavor meant to be? Way teller. I'm guessing it's Nutella, but way. I do not know why they not understand that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense now. Me being blonde. <laughs> got some fruit salad, EAAs. Applied nutrition. Nice. Candy Ice Blast EAAs. Nice. Some uh, so what EAAs, I think. What are your go-to EAAs like for flavour? For flavour, applied nutrition. Normal. Yep. You know, okay. I always go complete strength normally. Just um, the mango yep. or the grape. Yep. But yeah, I mean, right. I, I ran out and I got some of these from uh, Graftism the other week. And I was like, oh, it's, these are quite nice. So I ordered some yeah. more. And then this, mate, is an absolute yeah, game changer. Flavor drops. Flavor flav drops. Toffee caramel. Okay. Absolute game changer. So I'll tell you a little story about um, flavor drops. 
Go on. So my first prep, I started looking all into the sugar-free, zero-calorie stuff. And I, um, I went a bit too far on it. I um, ordered a few too many, and I used it a bit too much during the day. <laughs> and to begin with, it weren't too bad. But after you're putting them in every single meal and you're having sugar-free sweets and sugar-free jellies, after about two, three days, your stomach doesn't feel so great. <laughs> yeah, I literally, um, yeah, they went through me. They went through me and it was awful. Like, but I didn't realize what it was. So I kept them in my diet, yeah, I kept yeah. having them. And literally it went through me for about a week. And then I sort of clocked, oh, I've realized what I've done now. What have I changed in my diet? That I've added loads of them in. Yeah. So they're good, but I still avoid them now. I stay away from them because I, don't, I never want that again. For That's me, cool. I don't do flavor drops in anything but coffee now. So I used to have them in my oats. Okay. Um, I'll only have these in coffee now, but they take they make the coffee yep. taste so good. Um, I'll have like a Pepsi Max. Um, yep. And then I'll have. I think about, I'll have a litre and a half of water. Um, I normally, I'm, at the minute, like I'm 14 weeks out now and I'm on like five litres of water a day. Like I just like drinking water. Um, I just, it just seems to get through you it. Wait till you've got a water load and that's a lot more. I know. So I drink about five litres. Uh, I'll have like a litre and a half with a bit of squash, like Vimto sugar free. Yep. Um, and that's where I'm at. Like about, about six weeks out, I'll pull that. Do you know what I mean? So I reckon. Okay. That's where I'm. That's where I'm at. So. Yeah. Well, it, it, moderation. At the end of the day, anything in moderation is all right. So as long as you're not having it in excess, you should be fine. Plus, right. doing it now, your body's going to be used to it. To be fair, dropping these on so asparagus as well in the pan. Okay. That, that's that's also quite good. <laughs> it's like honey. I <laughs> see. I'm I'm like salt and pepper on my asparagus. That's the one. Honestly, salt and pepper. <laughs> so there's loads of little tricks you know if anyone wants to reach out uh, and ask for a few prep tricks if you're on your first prep then you know feel free because there's plenty <laughs> yeah listen drop me a message drop us a, me ask a message we yeah we got too many of them too you many might, you might think i'm weird now but when you do your prep you'll soon realize it's um it's a common thing <laughs> right, on, on, a, on a cucumber lifesaver you chop it up, you put it in everything. I used to have cucumber in porridge. That's what, yeah, people do. They, you know, grind up the old cucumber, get the volume in it. Yeah, so I've yeah. never done that. But, um, yeah, like going back to talking backstage, you know, I absolutely loved backstage on my first prep. Everyone was chatting. Like I say, people were getting out bags of sweets. People were showing what they're having post-show. Yeah. Everyone was like, you know, oh, I'll trade you a bit of this for that because that looks banging. It was just brilliant. And then, like you say, everyone was getting out their 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 food that they're having before show, you know, I got out my jam and people were like, fucking hell, like, I've run out of jam and the coach said, can I have some jam? Like, I've got a big jar, you know, I could have fucked everyone up and said no, but, you know, I'm handing out jam and like, you know, it's just wicked. Like you say, everyone was dead friendly and, and uh, yeah, it was, it was good. It, it makes the whole experience, you know, being friendly, being there, because everybody's worked just as hard as you to get there. Like, everybody's been through what you've been through to get there. Like, yes, slight, the, your journeys are slightly different, but you've still had to push your body to the absolute limit. So you've all achieved something great by being there. Yeah, I totally agree. And then they say... Oh, so, yeah, bit friendly, on, enjoy it. On stage as well, you know, I had two other guys that uh, were coached by Jason, the same show. So, you know, like you say, you're, you're doing your eye-walking men's physique, so, you know, you stood back while you're watching them, you know, you're cheering them on, like, you're clapping. It's just like, it's, you're buzzing, mate. As soon as I walked on that stage... You know, I was like, it's like everything lifted, mate. I was like, you know, just on cloud nine. It's the posing just flowed. Like I wasn't nervous about my posing. It just, I just got into that pose and just, it just, just, yeah. All the sort of emotions and nervousness I had leading up to going on stage after being on stage for about 30 seconds, all, all lifted. I just felt great. Yeah, no, that's amazing. How did you feel afterwards? Obviously, when you initially come on, come off the stage and like, how, how did you feel? I placed third, and like you say, the same as you, I went to win. But, you know, you're, yep. you're on stage and you see the guys you're competing against, then you're like, actually, they look really good. Like, you know, like really good. Yep. You know, as much as hard work you've put in, you know, you can only appreciate how good they look as well. So, you know, initially I walked off, I finished, I placed third. I was happy, you know, I qualified for the British this year. Uh, there's like, 
oh, 15 seconds of like, fucking hell, I wanted to win that. And then like, you know, messages from Jay start coming through, like, come see me, congrats, and, like family are clapping, like congratulations and all this lot. And then like everything just like lifted. I was like, you know, I, I just smashed that. That was wicked, you know, like never looked as good as this. And yeah, I felt, I felt really good, mate. Like to be fair, I walked off stage and I was happy to do it again, like straight away. Do you know what I mean? Like it was just fell in love with that whole process. So I was, I was, yeah, enjoyed it all. Put myself in a huge food coma. Yeah, that's cool. That's- <laughs> it's awful awful you think you can eat so much more when you can post show nah you can't eat a lot no. <laughs> awful. first meal was fine second meal i was half asleep at the table <laughs> i have lost you hold on where yeah. are we Sam pops up right we're back we're back good stuff what See, was your go-to meal where did where did you go to so I booked an Indian. I was in Birmingham oh my. my show, so I booked an Indian. I love Indian. Like I say, like I don't know, like it's the same with my off-plan meals. Like when you get them during prep, you know, you check in on a Saturday morning. Jace replies Saturday morning, off-plan meal. You're like, I don't know what to have. I've been thinking of food for the last two weeks. Yep. And now I now and I've come to having a meal. What do I have? Like, yep. Clueless, mate. It's, it's funny because like the day before, you know exactly what you want. Yeah, one hundred percent. The day you actually get given it off that meal, it's like I don't know what to have. <laughs> so <you're> like <laughs> everything just changes. So yeah, like you say, I booked an Indian. It was awesome. It was it was amazing. Uh, Ashes in Birmingham, like highly recommended. But yeah, had that. I, I had some I had some of the B-more treats. You know that we had to be done. I had a box of them. They hey, all day. I'm not going to lie, they're tasty, they're good. <laughs> so, yeah. day treats out there at the moment. That's it, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, a couple of more questions I just want to ask is like, you know, um, yep. you're obviously a coach now, yourself. So, you said yep. you've touched base on, you know, doing the PT course, learning a bit more. You're obviously like learning. Like, what made you then take the step yep. and say, I'm going to become a coach myself? So, essentially, me with like, wanting to become a coach is never something that I ever thought about. Um, I used to get... Like, so, when I started making progress myself, I used to get a lot of people ask me for advice, like inside and outside the gym, and a lot of friends and family would ask me questions. And when I realised I had the answers, like, it was just rolling off the top of my head. Someone would ask me, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, I know that. And I'd tell them, I'd be like, actually, I know quite a lot now. Like, I know a lot. Yeah. Or if I didn't know something, I'd be like that's really interesting. I want to find out about that. Yeah. And it was a fact that it wasn't that I wanted to find out for them. I wanted to find out for myself to widen yeah. my own knowledge because I like it when somebody comes up to me or somebody asks me a question and I'm like, there, that's the answer. Yeah. But at the same time, I also love it if I don't know the answer because I'm like, I now don't get to learn about something that I don't know. And I was never good in school. As in, I didn't like studying. I didn't like learning. I hated it. I absolutely hated it. So now for me to be passionate about something and actually want to learn and want to study something, that's, that's weird. That, that, that's something I'm not used to. Yeah. I actually enjoy learning about it. So, yeah, I decided I'd learn more, do a bit more. And as my knowledge base like, increased and I knew a lot more, I had a few friends that I decided, you know what, let, let, me, let, me, let me give this a go. Let me see if I can help other people achieve what I've achieved. So... I started coaching a few friends for free um, and they started achieving good results. And I was like, okay, well, I can do it with them. Let's, let's, let's try someone else. So I started it with another person or doing it for free, just giving them, coaching them on a weekly basis, checking stuff like that, giving their diet and training plan. And all of a sudden they started making good results. And I was like, I'm enjoying this. Like I enjoy helping people achieve things that they couldn't do on their own. So it's, it's like, I'm now passionate about something. I enjoy doing something for myself. And I can now help other people do that too. Yeah. That's a win-win to me. I'm enjoying my life by doing what I love doing. Yeah. And I'm helping other people improve their lives by essentially doing what I enjoy doing. So <laughs> I thought, sorry, let's let's like, you know, let's let's take this a bit further. So that's when I thought, you know what, let's let's give this a go. So I come up with my company logo and originally I was called DM Fitness. So, like a gym, mate. I made it on one of them little apps. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, just, just, just like, yeah, I just made it on one of them little logo apps, DM Fitness. It was, it was like the most basic logo ever. Yeah. Um, and I spoke to a few online coaches, a few coaches, and I was like, yeah, do it. Like, I actually, I remember when I was trying to push it, and it wasn't going that well, and it was, it, it was okay, but it wasn't anything amazing. And I remember I was down Southampton, um, I was down at Spartan's gym, and I was talking to Ryan Mackins and Rhino. Um, Louis, why well, can't I remember his surname? It's going to bug me. Um, <laughs> Louis, I apologize if you're listening to this. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, I feel awful now, awful. Um, anyway, so I, was, I, was, I, was, I had a training session with them, and we were talking about the online coaching because I knew that I did a bit. Um, and it was something that Ryan Mackin said, and he was just like, like he, he basically said, Do or die, and he was like, He was like you what would you do if you had nothing right now you had nothing you would have to put everything into something like otherwise you wouldn't survive he's like imagine that you're in that situation like and you need to put everything into this to grow it and I thought you know what like that's right I really need to give this a go it's something I enjoy doing so I need to put a lot more effort into it and and that's what I started doing really um so I started putting a lot more effort into it and I decided how can I then improve even more so I decided to join the LRF and Jace um, six-month mentoring course. Mentoring, yeah. Which I've so done. So it's something that I... Yeah. Say that again, sorry? That's something I've done and now you're doing, yeah. We've both been on the same path. Yeah. Yeah. So and I, I saw people that had done it. I saw people that were successful because of it. And I thought, you know what? There's areas which I need to develop on, but I don't know what those areas are. So what's better to sign up for a course where they will tell me the areas I need to develop on. They'll see what I'm doing wrong or see the areas I can improve and help me improve. So I'm currently still on that six month mentoring course. Yeah. So at the end of it, I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but there's people on the course that have been very successful that have done well. So hopefully that will be the same for me. Um, and then, with the whole coaching thing, I've always been, I've always been like, I had a sports background and I've always been into training. So for me, it's just something I enjoy doing. It's something that I feel that will make me happy. And it's something that I can do anywhere in the world. Yeah, yeah. So if I can help others yeah. achieve happiness and achieve their goals, um, like I've done myself, and I can do that when and wherever, this I can't think of anything better. Yeah. It's exactly the same as me, mate. So, like, it's nice to hear it because it's not it's not just me. Like, you know, I've been through, like you said, you know, at school, you weren't happy with your physique. You weren't happy with the way you looked. You, you're almost envious of other people, you know, and it's exactly the same with me. And, it, and then you realise that, you know, you personally can make that change. You know, things have to change, but you can make the change. And now you've become, you know, you're happy with how you look. Obviously, we're always evolving to try and look better. But yeah. you know you're confident with how you look, and you and you and you love your process of you changing, and how much better it's made you as a person. So like, if you can do that for other people as well, then it's just a win-win in life. You know that's exactly what I'm doing. You know I've realised how much this process has helped me grow as a person, not just my physique. You know, confidence, everything. You know, throughout. You know, positivity. Um, you know, um, I'm more organised. You know, everything. So you know. And, and happy about learning, so you know, it's, it's with us with, with the same, that, that, that process. But it has had so many like training, just as a foundation, has had so many positive benefits on my life. Like, it shaped me into the person I am today. Like, I was insecure. I was small. I wasn't who I wanted to be. I was, I was, I was shy. I had no confidence. Like, yeah. I, I genuinely didn't. I tried to be confident. Um, but it isn't the same as being confident um, because I wasn't. But through training and through the structure that it's given my life and what I've learned, it's helped grow me grow into the person I am now. And yeah. I'm so grateful for it. Like, I don't know where I'd be without training. So, no. yeah, it is, it's my life. I love it. And what I, you know, the conversation I often have with clients is that, you know, I was that guy a few years ago that had no time for the gym. You know, I'm too busy. Like, I can't go to the gym because I'm too busy. Now, you know, I was too busy procrastinating. That's what I was doing. You know, too busy sat on my bed yeah. going, I'm too busy for the gym. You know, because I've driven home from work, sat down for a half hour, 
oh, I'm too busy for the gym because I've got some things to do tonight. But, and you know, you've had a hard day. I've had a hard like, day. It's been a yeah. hard day. Yeah, I've been so, one of them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Feeling sorry you know, for yourself. conversation that you have with clients, you know, when you see your body evolving and you enjoy your training, you realise you've got time because you create the time. You know, you have a busy day, but you still get the task ticked off that enable you the time to go to the gym because you enjoy it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you if you if you've got a goal and you want to grow confidence and you want to look better, the hardest part is starting. So get some advice or get some guidance on how to do it, um, and have someone support you through the changes because it doesn't just happen overnight. Like you don't just suddenly wake up and all has and have the time and enjoy training. You know, there's a little bit of a process change, but once you get to, through that stage, life's like amazing. Like you say now, don't know, don't know where I'll be without it. So. You, you, you was a big guy, like, but before you started training, like, you look at your transformation, it's amazing. Like, you've done yeah. so well. Yeah. Like, look at that, like, you, you was big. Like, you've lost a lot of weight and yeah. built a lot of muscle. So, like, you should be very happy with what you've achieved so far. Like you say, it's impressive. You know, when you can do it, anyone can do it. Do you know what I mean? Like you say, I've got clients now that are like, I've got clients now that have dropped 25 kilo, I've got a girl who's dropped 50 kilo, like, crazy transformation, you know, but, and, the confidence I've seen pro. How rewarding. It's, yeah, yeah. And, and how rewarding is that feeling? Like, when, when you see what you've helped your client achieve or the feedback they give you and say they're so happy they're getting compliments on the fact that they, they, they look so much slimmer in the face or they've had to go out and buy a whole new wardrobe because yeah, yeah. they've lost so much weight. Yeah. How they're like, general day-to-day -day life has improved because of what you've helped them achieve. Like that feeling like is so satisfactory. Like it, it's amazing. You can't beat that feeling, helping yeah, somebody what? achieve. It's funny, isn't it? Because like, my favourite days last year when I wasn't a coach were my check-in days. Like, I was buzzing to check in. Like, yeah. you know, can't wait to check in. Can't wait to get feedback. Now, obviously, I'm still as buzzing to get my feedback, but it's just what I do. You know, it's a day-to-day -day task. I just check in and I get response and I do whatever I'm told to do. Like, you know, that's that's what it's become. My favourite days now are getting responses from check-ins. Like, you know, and, and people are like, yeah. oh, buzzing to check in tomorrow. You're like, yeah, you know, like, you're excited for it to come through. It comes through. They've made another week's progress. And then you're like... Fucking all right, okay. I'll just scroll back and have a look at the start photos. You put them together and you're like, wow, like, yeah. you know, send it to them. They're absolutely buzzing off their tits. You know, it's like, no, there's no better feeling. Like, you know, check in day is by far the best day of the week. Yeah. When your clients check in and you see the progress they've made that week, yeah. like, yeah, you, you, you can't compare it to anything else. Like, you're helping people transform their lives and it's an, it's an amazing feeling. Yeah, yeah, love it. Love it. So, you know, going to touch on the last question, or well, not question or such, but just okay. a topic, you know, and it's a bit of advice, I think, really, is, you know, we've known each other a little bit. We've, we've spoke on Instagram and stuff. I actually met Dan. Yep. I didn't even know this until I told him the other day. In a gym in Spain. So, I, I didn't know this. <laughs> I went and trained with Dan. Yeah, this, I'm, I'm not happy. You just did that to me in the gym. You should have been like... <laughs> a couple of years ago, I was training out in Spain, in Alicante, and there's this guy in the gym speaking English and looking huge compared to what I did at the time. I mean, it still does, but, you know, I'll say at the time. Well, I weren't that big back then. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was Dan. And um, and then I was scrolling through Instagram on Jace's stories and this guy pops up. I'm thinking, I recognise that face. I recognise that face. Added him and scrolled down and there's, a, and there's a video of you in the gym. And I'm thinking, that's where I know you're from. Bumped into you in the gym in Spain. <laughs> Mad, such a small world, such a small world. Yeah, but yeah, yeah we had said something. We've gone for a cheat bill. <laughs> They're good out there. <laughs> but yeah, so we, yep. we ended up training um, together at Crayford the other week, um, and I was very impressed with you know like your approach to training, and again you know not focusing on weight. Obviously, you push huge weight because you're a big guy, but you know you're not trying to alpha dog everyone in there by loading up plates go and look at the weight i'm pushing you focus on form you focus on technique and if you need to take some weight off that's exactly what you'll do you won't try and push through sacrifice form uh you warmed up properly and everything was just very good so it's just a sort of question of like what what made you or has it always been that way or you know you said you, you liked you trade off arnie and you know you didn't didn't, didn't care about uh rest etc so something obviously changed but you know, if you can give some advice on focusing on form, recovery, 
you know, what would it be to your clients? Like, how do you how do you put that forward to your clients? Drop the ego. Your ego is not going to get you where you want to do within your physique, essentially. Um, I know because I've been there, I've done it. Yes, you will progress, but the risk of injury is great. And if you're going balls to the wall every session, lifting heavy weight, you're going to fry your central nervous system and your body's not going to recover. Um, you're also going to risk injury because where your muscles may be able to lift the weight or even move the weight, your joints, tendons and ligaments are not going to adapt as quickly. So that risk for injury is far greater. Um, and I know this because I've been injured. Like I, I broke my arm uh, training, a stress fracture. Um, through bench press when I was young. Um, I gave myself patella tendonitis in both knees from overtraining legs and lifting weights that essentially I couldn't handle, my body couldn't handle, it just broke. Um, I've done loads of lower back injuries. Um, I tore my bicep before when I was younger. I, I've, I've done a lot of injuries. Um, I had a lot of injuries, should I say. So because of this, I've learned to train smart. Um, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying don't train hard because you need to train hard. Oh, wait, it was a hard session. Intensity. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a good session. We'll have to hit another one up soon. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you can create intensity through so many different variations and so many different variables that people don't necessarily understand. So yes, lifting heavy is important because it stimulates your muscles and creates tension. But you can do this through so many other ways. You can do it through drop sets, giant sets. You can do it through um, rest pull sets. You can do it through controlling the negative. You can do it through isometric holds. Like, like, there's so much more to it. Yeah. Um, and actually, the, so the more tension you put for a muscle, the greater damage you're going to cause to that muscle. So the more it's going to, so, so then it has to repair and grow essentially. So train smart. Is, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I've learned that over the years, I know what works with me. Um, I know what works for my clients. Um, and I am making a lot better progress through adapting these different forms of creating tension rather than just lifting heavy. So when I learned to drop my ego and not care about essentially the weight I'm trying to push or the weight anybody else is pushing, um, my progress has shot through the roof. Yeah. Um, I'm hitting PB every single week. I'm progressing every single week now. Whereas before, I would be training very hard. My strength would go up for about three weeks. And then my body would be so fatigued, I'd have to back off. Yeah. Whereas I don't need to do that now because I'm training smart. And I'd say the biggest thing for me was learning that it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing in your gym. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing on social media. That person isn't you. Like, yes, Tom, Dick and Harry might squat 300 kilo, but that's not you. So you are the only person you're in competition with is yourself. And, and if it. you want to progress, you've got to be smart about it. Because at the same time, you risking injury is going to mess you up. You're not going to be able to train years down the line. And when you do get older, it's, it's, it's going to come back to haunt you. So I train smart, I progress well, um, and I've dropped my ego. And that is essentially how I'm progressing and how I try and get my clients to progress as well. And if I train with other people, it's about when I train with other people, you see there's always that competitive side to them. They'll try and push a little bit harder or they'll try and do what you're doing or maybe vice versa. They're doing more than you. So I'll try and push a little harder. But you need to remember, they're not you. So you still need to back, you still need to do what you can manage, essentially. Like, you're in competition with yourself. Yeah. So I've been taught, I've had times in the gym where I've had mates, and they're like, I'm going to get five plates on this. They're like, come on, you can do five. But I know, last week I only got four. So I'm not, I'm not going to push myself past the limits. Yeah. No, because I'm not going to progress well if I do that. So you just got to stay in your own lane you got to focus on your goals and what you're doing and yeah, forget about what other people are doing essentially. Again, I think the best thing you can uh, do to know what your form is like is film it. We all think we've yep. got form until we watch it back. Like you say, I've learned yep. so much 100%. from actually just watching it back and going, shit, that's not very good. Yeah. Drop the weight, 
build the tension in that muscle. Like you actually, you drop the weight and you feel it 10 times more. And you've worked yes, the muscle. Because you you're now in that muscle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're using your back. A lot of the time. Go on, sorry, mate. Yes, I was going to say, a lot of the time when you, when you are lifting heavy weights, if the muscle that you're trying to use can't handle that, your body will take over. It's a bit like when people squat. So when people squat, they'll have a nice eccentric phase. And when they drive up from the bottom part of the squat, you will see their knees go inwards, their, yeah. their, their knees bow inwards. And this is because the muscles they are engaging or trying to engage can no longer handle that weight they're lifting. So your body tries to use other muscles to counteract that, to lift that weight. So you're no longer engaging the muscle that you're trying to engage and it's not working. And all you're going to do is risk injury. So you need to drop the weight, you need to slow it down and you need to really engage the muscle that you're trying to grow. Yeah, totally agree. But like you say, you know, so, when, you, when you're just watching yourself in the mirror or might be in front of you or you're doing the exercise, you don't really see it, you don't really feel it sometimes, you know, until you watch it back, then you go on it again and you think about a lot more about what you're actually doing and then you do feel it and you're like, actually, that's what I need to do. And like you say, counting in your head as well, you know, like two second negative, whatever it may be, <laughs> if you don't count it, <laughs> the rep's so much quicker when you watch it back than what you thought you were doing on the exercise. Yeah. So, you know, don't be afraid to put it in the gym. Don't be afraid to send it to your coach. You know, many a times I've sent a video to Jake and gone, actually, like, I mean, maybe this was a bit heavy. And he's gone, yeah, a little bit heavy. Let's just knock two and a half kilo off. Okay, do that. Send it next week. Much better. So, Jobs are good. With my check-in sheets that I send my clients each week, there's always a bit down there where it says, send me any videos that you're struggling with on, the, on your form. So basically, I can analyze their form and give them feedback on it to make sure they are lifting correctly. And if you ever see me in the gym, Nine times out of 10, I've got my tripods, I've got my camera and I film my workout so that I can then look back at that and be like, right, that was good or no, that wasn't good. I need to slide down or I need to back off with the weight. Yeah. So I'm always analysing what I'm doing so that I can progress. And the same with my clients. If they are struggling or not progressing, I want to analyse what they're doing so that I can help them progress. Yeah, you know, not everyone's going to feel as comfortable. You know, if you've only been in the gym a few weeks, you know, whacking a tripod out and doing it when you're not comfortable with yourself isn't going to be an easy task, you know. But if you can get to the gym when it's a little bit quieter and just film one exercise and just get a bit of feedback on it, you're probably going to feel better about it, you know. Um, so, you know, it's a bit of advice, you know, don't walk around a tripod filling it, filling it every exercise if, you, if you're not comfortable with it. You know, it's not going to be a good session. You're not going to enjoy your training. But if you can just progress a little bit each week, then, you know, it's going to be a lot more beneficial for you. Or if you're not comfortable with a tripod in the gym, train with one of your friends and ask them to film the set film for you. Matches, That's yeah. a lot less noticeable, yeah, yeah. not going to cause as much attention, and hopefully that'll make you feel more comfortable about filming it. And what you need to remember, well, what people need to remember, is that if they are lifting wrong, they're not going to progress well. So by actually filming it and correcting that form, they will progress a lot better so they'll be more confident in less in a shorter period of time and again you know people do feel when they get a camera or whatever eyes are on them and yeah it may be the case a couple of people are looking but a couple of people are looking at you when you film a set a couple of people looking at me when they film a set a couple of people look at the client when they film yep. a set you know there's nothing wrong with it you know it's not eyes on them because they're doing it wrong they're not people aren't judging it's just like they see a camera come out they're interested they might have a quick look you know like you say so it's just you feel nervous when you've got a camera on you and you know you're filming that set but drop that like you say you're in there to improve yourself um and that person that was looking at you filming your set in three months time when you're twice the size because you know you, you've actually trained yep. properly and read the games yep. they're gonna they're gonna probably talk to you because they're, they're saying well done you know so <laughs> it's it's yeah it's yeah 100 percent and they said, well, we're not in the gym to impress anybody in the gym. Like, we don't go there to impress the people in the gym. We go there to better ourselves. And hopefully that's why everyone else is in there. So, listen, if you're in the gym and you're doing something like, and you're filming it, I'm never going to judge you for that. Like, if I feel like you need a bit of advice or I can give you some advice, I'll always come over and I'll be like, can I offer you some advice with that? Yeah. Um, because essentially I want everybody else to improve. I want people to improve. And I feel like the gym should be that environment where you're there to help each other, where everybody in there is there for the same or similar goals. We're all trying to improve. And again, I think yeah, people, people are nervous of independent gyms. 
um, because they feel, you know, they're not good enough to be in there. But everyone's has every right to be in the gym, no matter what stage they're at. And I think, you know, even like the more independent they get, the more people are in there because they know they're in there to improve themselves and will be willing to help. You know, it's like the, they're not scary. They're not intimidating. Yes, some people in there might be huge and, you know, all different stages in, in their bodybuilding career or ch- training career. But, you know, even that they'll be willing to help more than someone who else is also a newbie in there. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it doesn't matter what gym you go to. Just, just feel confident and enjoy it. I can fully relate to that. When I first started training, I only had a few gyms that I would ever train in because I wasn't confident to go yeah. to other gyms. I can't go to that gym. I don't know no one there. Like, I'm yeah. scared. And I was scared. I was scared to go into gyms that I didn't know. Exactly. There's nothing wrong with being scared. Thing. Yeah, because it happens, yeah. No. no look, look, we, we've all been there. We've done it. It's okay. Like, it's okay to be scared to go in an environment. But the only way you're going to be comfortable with that is to put yourself in that uncomfortable situation. Like you, you've got to get comfortable at being uncomfortable. Otherwise you're never going to progress and you're never going to grow and develop. Yeah. And, and that's just not within lifting. That's, that's in life. Yeah. Exactly. And that's why I think, you know, the whole, the whole training thing helps in overall life. Like you say, because you do put yourself in an uncomfortable situation that helps you grow in life. Like you say, it all merges together and it's all, it's all, you have to go through some uncomfortable times to feel a lot better in yourself, like you say. So it's it's interesting. It's hundred percent interesting. Wicked, mate. So how can people get in contact with you? Um, if anyone's you know got a question for you, how can they drop you that question? Uh, if anyone's interested in coaching, how can people get a hold of you? Because um, that was that was a good chat. Yep. Well. Firstly, I want to say that anybody can transform their physique by following a structured diet and nutrition plan anybody so yeah that's firstly and if you want to get in contact with me drop me a message uh drop me a dm saying coaching or um follow the link in my bio for a free zoom consultation or phone course consultation whatever suits you and we can talk about your goals struggles barriers that you may be facing how we can overcome this and how i can help you wicked so this video will be on instagram um be on the uh, Apple Podcasts, you know, Spotify and YouTube. So I'll drop your D- I'll drop your Instagram tag on that. Um so people can can open it up or, or link it to it. But yeah, good chat mate and um, we'll make sure we definitely hit up a session soon. Lovely. We will do it on a cheat day so that uh we can go for food after yeah <laughs> got told off for that last one. Uh, you, you'll have to ask Chase and see what he says. <laughs> we'll do mate. Let's love it. Cheers for that, Dan. Oh, lovely. Listen, it has been lovely talking to you, and I'll speak to you soon. Will do, mate. Take care. Cheers, mate.